Hey, if you enjoy my content, please consider picking up a copy of my latest spooky short novel, Megawatt vs. The Vampires of the Sun. Available alongside another huge selection of family-friendly content at EnterTheLostLibrary.com. I guarantee we've got a good read for you. Hello all you down-ass killers in Webtown and welcome to Crypto Comics. Today we are covering the baddest of the bad from the 1990s. This is my man, your man, the man, Chapel, a Rob Liefeld creation. Exploding from the pages of Extreme Sacrifice. Now we have covered Chapel extensively here at Crypto Comics. Whether it be in the pages of Youngblood, or whether it be in the pages of Todd McFarlane's Spawn. Because you see, if you don't know, Chapel is the man who killed Al Simmons, who did then go on to become the shadowy figure known as Spawn. And today is a very special Rob Liefeld double feature. That's right, it's a double dose of Chapel for each and every one of you beautiful people in Webtown. And we are going to get into it right now with Chapel, issue number one of two from the very first miniseries from February of 1995. Featuring a plot written by Brian Witten, a script by Brian Witten and Eric Stevenson, with pencils by Tom Tenney and Calvin Irving, and with some of the finest inks you'll see this year, Jamie Mendoza. Featuring colors by Nathan Lum. Chapel. All his life he's been a soldier fighting someone else's war a hateful and unstoppable killing machine. He took life without mercy and without hesitation. Never once did he question the consequences of his actions or the establishment he served. In the eyes of those who controlled him, he was the perfect weapon. And when the time came that he was told to kill his best friend, he did so without a second thought. That decision would affect him the rest of his mortal life. Much later, Chapel would discover the true nature of those he served and would himself be betrayed at their hands. Discarded and distraught, he plunged headlong into the abyss, eventually taking his own life in a bid to obtain spiritual power, the likes of which few could truly comprehend. This is a story of Chapel's past, before Night Strike, before Young Blood, before his dizzying descent into madness, all of which you can see here at Crypto Comics in the Image Comics playlist. I'm telling you, it's a masterpiece. I'm telling you, if Netflix knew what they were missing, they would license the rights to Youngblood and Spawn and Shadowhawk and Savage Dragon and Witchblade and The Darkness, and they would create a comic book universe so compelling that it would knock Marvel's socks off. But anyway, let's get to our friend Bruce Stinson over here. Delightfully drawn by Brian Witten and Eric Stevenson, with those impeccable inks by Jamie Mendoza. Welcome to my hell. The name's Stinson. Bruce Stinson. For the better part of my life, though, I've gone by another name. To my friends and lovers, to my enemies and victims, I'm Chapel. Once upon a time, I was the best professional killer on the market. So good the United States government rarely needed anyone else for their dirty jobs. Worked out great for a while. I started off with a strictly undercover wetworks operation called Night Strike, and then wound up a charter member of the government spandex super team Youngblood. Like I said, it worked out great for a while. Now I'm lying here in my apartment, watching my life go down the tubes in one big downward spiral. I've killed my best friend. I've learned that my ex-boss Jason Wynn was poisoning me with HIV over the course of my career. I've even been kicked out of young blood and transferred to that freak show blood strike outfit. Needless to say, that didn't last long. See young blood strike files number one through three in the back issue bins here at Crypto Comics Image Comics playlist. Blood strike issues seven through ten and Spawn twelve and thirteen, none of which are in the back issue bins here at Crypto Comics. Well, actually, well, no, because he's alive, so this. Would be a flashback. I'm getting myself confused. I'll shut up and keep going. Only satisfaction I get nowadays is by living past glories through a bottle. Put enough of this stuff away, and I almost feel sane again. Yeah, put enough away, and the noise from the ceiling fan becomes the roar of a helicopter. Just like in the classic Francis Ford Coppola Vietnam Perspective film, 
Apocalypse Now, featuring Marty Sheen as Chapel. And the dingy walls of this lousy room become Nicaragua, 1983. Time is tight, and this is what we call a kiss job. Keep it simple, stupid. Name of the game, get in, make the hit, and get out without leaving any tracks. No problem. The team of mercs I've got with me are the best in the business. I don't know. I hand-picked them myself. Roger Dickinson, our point man, karate, judo, you name it, he knows it. Kevin O'Brien, tough kid out of Brooklyn, a real fire plug of a guy. Arrogant, intense, and mouthy, but always good for watching your back. Brad Smits, James Dean and Cammies, the kid's got a slow-eyed charm when it comes to anything but killing. Jeff Jackson, he and I go so far back I've lost track of all the jobs we've done, but boy does he pack one hell of a punch. Billy Zane, our utility man, the kind of guy who can go anywhere, speak any language, especially when it involves guns or dressing up in a purple spandex outfit and being the Phantom. Turns out he's also a demon. If you ever saw that movie Demon Night, Billy Zane was in that. See, he's got the name Billy Zane. Is it a coincidence? How can it be? It absolutely cannot be a coincidence that he was named Billy Zane and the Phantom is Billy Zane. Also, Lake Consequences, that has Billy Zane and Titanic by James Cameron. But I selected him for our group because of the Phantom. And who do you think our final member is over here in the Green Beret? Is it going to be John Wayne? No. Clint Eastwood? Hell no. It's going to be the one, the only, Jet Lee. Loves to bar brawl, shoot, and generally raise hell. My kind of guy. Gotta love him. Especially in Once Upon a Time in China. Also in Black Mask. That was underrated. You know, it was six years before I found out he wasn't the little Asian guy in Ocean's Eleven. Ain't my fault. All them little Asians look alike to me. I don't get out much. Too much time in South America, Nicaragua, shit like that. Anyway, where was I? That's right, 1983, Nicaragua. Been a while since we tasted any real action. The boys are getting anxious. I fire off the facts as we begin to touch down. Listen up, crew! We're gonna hit the ground hard and head due north until we locate Colonel Black's little Latin hideaway. Just so you're all up to date, Black was originally sent down here on behalf of Uncle Sam. We set him up with the necessary equipment for helping a fight to bring democracy to Nicaragua. But unfortunately, the good Colonel's no longer a sound mind. The Nico says into black magic and voodoo that he can raise the dead. Our man in Washington says he wants us to leave him looking like a stain. Don't take any chances, boys. Kill anything that moves. If I'm laying bets, I'd say Black's got eyes all over the place. God, I hate the rain. Ain't no thing, Chapel Man. At least we're down in it again, doing nothing. That'd be hell, man. Yeah, you got that right. I like how you're doing that accent, though, Billy Zane. You're pretending you're from the South. That's good, man. You're talented. I'm surprised you didn't get more roles after Demon Night. I'll tell you what, though. I'd trade then for now in a heartbeat. And a heart beats all the time it takes for me to realize something's not right. Bingo! We got a whole pack of them! Before any of them even know I'm there, I managed to take the first one of them from behind. Scrunch and eyeball pops out and everything. That's, that's horrible. Look at, look at what we're doing. We are mercilessly killing people here, people. Just walk through the jungle and kill people we don't even know. I don't even think these guys is armed. I just wanted to kill some people. Talk about your Kodak moments. I'll never forget the look on their faces when I brought up Kodak in the 21st century in a comic book review video when everybody was like, what the hell is Kodak? It don't matter. What matters is it's a nice day for hunting, huh? Die! Not today. Almost on cue. The night becomes a symphony of gunfire. Jeff opens it up, and then Billy joins in to accompany him. Before I know it, Jet's riffing like I've never seen done before. First he dodges a blow from some crazed Contra. Then he kicks the jerky gun in the air and blows his head clean off. And we're just gonna keep killing people, walking through the jungle, murdering everybody we come across. Once the Contra stopped twitching, I reached down to relieve him of the weapons. So they send you, eh, Stinson? Funny. I would have thought they'd at least send someone with a little class. Next thing I know, all that's there is blood and guts. He couldn't have spoken. I'm just tripping out, man. Tripping. 
I'll play it off. Can't let the troops see me bugging. Check it out, boys. We hit the jackpot with these losers. I got the automatic. Everything else is up for grabs. Billy grabs a nasty little knife. Roger digs a mini rocket launcher. I thought that was Violent J from Insane Clown Posse for one second. It turns out it was me. Now we're starting to look like Jim Lee's death blow in his mother. You know it's about to get dangerous now. Here we go. We found where them little Nicaraguans is hiding out. Let's get them. Baroom. Bodies go flying. When the explosions start, they light up the sky like fireworks and Mardi Gras. I always got a kick out of those damned explosions. Getting paid to create them is even better than looking at them, though. Just gonna keep fighting, fighting, fighting. And then Robin Hood's gonna show up. Don't worry, we're gonna take him out, too. Quick, we must run! Jose, the fire's heading for the gunshed. How will we ever stop El Chapo Gato? The gates of hell are gonna rock when Violator takes on Bad Rock. Written by the trash wizard Alan Moore and drawn very lovely by Brian Denham. Halloween? Rob Liefeld Appreciation Month? Halloween? Rob Liefeld Appreciation Month. Enough said. Quick to Me? I can't help but watch. As explosions go, this one's a beauty. And for just the slightest instant, it's so hot and dry I can't even feel the rain. God, I hate the rain. It's my window. I can't stand the rain. The boys rise to bask in their glory. And it's then I catch something out of the corner of my eye. Not surprisingly, it ain't the welcoming committee. Oh no! Hit the ground! Now! Whose face is this? Is this oh, this is the guy on the boat. Okay, sorry. It screwed me up so much I had to break character. I apologize. I'm trying to be method, you know. I walk around all day pretending like I'm chapel. It really weirds people out at the, the local shopping center. And they're like, why has he got his face painted? I'm in character. Give me a break, lady. Just get your milk. We're down for safety, and all we catch is the tail end of the explosion. These guys I got, though, they don't mind. It's just one big roller coaster ride for them. When all's said and done... There's not much left but blood and bodies. Hell, some of them I wouldn't even call bodies. Guess Black knows we're here. I can only imagine what he's got waiting for us on the other side of the water. Whatever it is, the boys can handle it. Unfortunately, we got some swimming to do first. The rain, that's bad enough. Now we gotta swim in it. Something's moving under the water, Chapel! I heed Brad's call, but I'm too late. I'm underwater in a second, and my lungs are filling with water. It's got chap. Let's off this mother. I'm with you, Kevin. I gotta fight a giant snake. To be continued. <laughs> so, there you go. Hey, listen. If you want to see how this concludes... Is Chapel going to beat that snake? I don't know. Actually, I guess we do know the answer because he goes on to do Operation Night Strike and kill Al and join Youngblood and then get booted off of Youngblood and join Blood Strike and then go crazier than a shithouse rat after that. But all I want to say is how impressed I am with the story, with the script. You know, I'm not a big fan of war books or espionage books, but this one was surprisingly enjoyable. And there is a second issue to this that concludes... The tale. But we're not going to cover it today. Now, I know, I know, I know. I promised you a chapel double feature. A double dose of our boy Rob Liefeld. And you're going to get it, but not from Image Comics. Not from Extreme Studios. Oh no, we're going to fast forward a few years to the days of awesome entertainment. And this, this is the uh, next issue of Chapel. Now, there was Chapel, and then there was... I think then came Operation Night Strike, and I think after that was a seven-issue chapel series that is surprisingly difficult to find. Uh, and then there was this single issue of chapel. Uh, so now we're at Nicaragua, 1983, right? Nicaragua, 1983, okay? We're going to fast forward in time to July, 1989, 
at 2.20 in the morning. This is written by Robert Napton, with pencils by John Stintzman, and inks by Larry Stucker and Livesay. Livesay, you know, it's that weird time when people in comic books thought they were rock and rollers and they could go by a single name. But I don't think any of those people are remembered today. So I guess that didn't work out too well. Now keep in mind, this is before Chapel murdered Al Simmons and he became Spawn. So we've gone from Nicaragua in 1983 to July 8th of 1989. Another brief history. A member of the elite paramilitary unit known as Night Strike before he became a Youngblood operative, Chapel had more than earned his reputation as one of the CIA's most ruthless and efficient killers. Chapel's ghoulish appearance, intimidating size, and seemingly limitless knowledge of weaponry and hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques easily mark him as one of the American government's most feared assassins. They woke me up for this. Five hours ago, I was partying in a DC bar. Then I get a page to report to the Pentagon ASAP. Pagers. It's just... Pagers. It's like a cell phone that you can't call from, right? It's just you get a text from a number. I think we've talked about it before, but just in case there's somebody new from who wasn't alive in the 20th century, you're not going to be, what the hell's a pager? That alone is enough to irritate me, but now they got some rookie giving me my mission debriefing. I keep praying they'll say something interesting. The target is an old playmate of yours, Kustan Hakmed. About freaking time. A small amount of the X7 serum, the super serum we've been injecting you with, was stolen from a research facility in Virginia. That stuff can turn a 90-pound weakling into a metahuman. I'd say you got a real problem on your hands. Hawkmed bought the serum on the black market, but uh, only enough for one test subject. We believe he'll try to retro-engineer more at his base, an island off the coast of Africa. Must be a summer house. I take it you want me to drop in on him? When do I leave? Immediately. Uh, yep, right now. One thing's for sure. This mission proves that the guys who run Operation Night Strike are a bunch of twisted bastards. They could have picked anyone for this job, but they picked me because they know Hawkmed and I have history. Back in 85? Two years after that, bad boy. Back in 85, Hawkmed was the poster child for anti-American sentiment in the Middle East. By 86, the administration wanted him dead, so they sent me to his homeland of Laban to liquidate his assets. According to intelligence, Hawkmed was using his residence in the capital of Tirad, so we went in and blew the place from the ground. There was just one glitch. He wasn't home that night, but his daughter was. I heard he vowed to take revenge against those responsible for his death. Needless to say, I'm not exactly remembered at Christmas time. I bet you not, Chapel. Murderous bastard. I found a good spot and crank up the night vision. The lab should be a couple of clicks through the jungle. In most special ops, you get to study a target folder before the mission. It details enemy strength and other helpful tidbits, like the exact location of the friggin' target. On these last minute jobs, though, global positioning satellites become your one and only friend. Without them, you can spend all day looking for the yellow brick road. And I ain't got all day. Why is it always so damn hot? I think it's because we are in Africa. I don't know. Sometimes I think we will never escape this hellish place. Do you have a light? I need to smoke this cigarette, but I'm going to do it backwards for some reason. That's odd. Blam! Just shoot a guy in the face. He doesn't have anything anymore. So much for my quiet entry. The lab. Where is it? Feel the knife in your stomach? You didn't even realize I did that, did you? Maybe this will get your attention. Put a gun to your head after I've already skewered you, boy. He tries to save his skin by telling me where the lab is, but then he dies on me anyway. No great loss to society. So far, the compound isn't on alert. That gunshot must not have been as loud as I thought. I switch to thermals and get a look-see at the men inside the lab. Only a couple, and probably non-combatants which makes my job a whole lot easier. I, uh, I believe I've isolated the, uh... Blood. See what that is. Yes? Ah! Admittedly, I make a lot of racket, but I just like murdering people. Skin complete. X7 serum confirmed. 
Yeah, this new HK-25 is a dream. It kills people much better. Perfect for cleaning operations. Before I'm done, every scrap of paper, every beaker and vial will be toast. Stop! Sorry, me no understand Lebanese. Ah! In seconds, the entire garrison will be on top of me. I just hope Hawkmed's with him, so we can settle our unfinished business. Sir, 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 the lab! Oh, no, it's chapel, you fools. I will deal with this. Tell them into withdrawal. I'll take care of the demon myself. Kaboom! We've covered Kaboom in the back issue bins, Crypto Comics, Image Comics playlist. I'm out of here. I'm sneaking out in the jungle. Hmm, something's happening. I'm being hunted. I'm being hunted. Oh, well, no, I gotta fight another snake! Oh, man! Oh, yeah, I did it. No problem. I'm just, I'm just gonna squeeze him until he dies. Hello, old friend. Leaving without saying goodbye? Stupid. I'm a stupid ass. A stupid mother effer. Whatever's happened to me now, I earned it. I've been taking regular doses of the X7 serum. Now I have the same superhuman speed and strength. Terrific. I suggest we have a fight. I agree. Let's do that. Hey, hey, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. I follow his trail, and it dead ends at Niagara Falls. Even though it's not really Niagara Falls, because I'm on an island off of Africa. If he rolled off this ledge, he ain't coming back. I'm out of time. My ride isn't going to wait forever. I'm just going to have to hope he's dead and sort it out later. Soon. The copter's ready. Right on schedule. Perfect time for Hawkman to show back up and for us to have another fight. Not so fast, my friend. Oh, man, he shot me, that son of a bee. Move it. You heard the man. Another personal, but I'm taking over this gunship. Come again, sir? Chapo, you coward! This isn't over, Chapo! It won't be over until one of us is... Dead? I surprised him with a quick 180 maneuver I picked up piloting in Afghanistan. I was thinking, should I explain? There was a whole war in Afghanistan before the war on terror that started because of September 11th. <sighs> Geopolitical comic books just uh, can't quite hold up, you know, but we'll pretend like it was he was fighting in uh, Afghanistan during the war on terror. That's fine. We can do that. You know, why has he got a pager instead of a cell phone? I don't know. We'll just we'll, we'll retrofit everything in the future. Use AI to fix all this up and give him a phone. Sir, my orders are to return you to the Nimitz by 420 hours. Ha 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 ha. Relax, Goma. We'll make it. Do me a favor, Hawkmid. Tell your daughter that I didn't mean it. Brack, 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 Obama! Oh my guts! How will I poop now? The Pentagon, August 10th, 1989. Nicely done, Chapel. Nicely done. Gonna give me a raise? Maybe after your next assignment. Sorry, pal. I'm taking a breather. Excuse me? You heard me. It's vacation time. This is a bad time for a sabbatical. There's never going to be a good time. I'll call you when I get back. Jeppel, wait. What's this? A going away present? Your next mission. Complete one more mission. Then I'll give you all the time off you need. This is a very delicate matter. It requires special handling. The person identified in this file has betrayed not only us, but his country. His employment will now be terminated. I don't believe it. You want me to kill my best friend? You want me to kill Al? But if I do that, the greatest independent comic book company of all time will be created. All right, I'll do it. The end. And a new beginning. What, 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 what? Did it come? Did he, did Rob actually sell animation cells from a cartoon that never existed? Paper cartoon? Kaboom number two, busting loose. Yeah, Jeff Matsuda, Jeff Loeb, I dig it. Check it out. Crypto Comics, back issue booms, image comics playlist. How many times am I going to say that today? Quite a few. Nope, we have not covered Alan Moore Supreme because it's hard to track down and expensive. Heroes Reborn artwork. 
Huh. How about that? I don't remember this. Okay. Anyway. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Oh, oh, that all white profit right there. That's the one that is really the coolest looking, isn't it? I think it is. Tell me in the comments below if you thought that was the coolest profit. Also, while you're down there in the comments, tell me, which of these two first issues of Chapel did you prefer more? The Image Comics release from February of 1995, or the Awesome Entertainment release from September of 1997? 97, really? Man, I feel like this wasn't till like 99, 2000, but I'm a little off there on my timeline with when Rob left Image and shuttered Maximum Press and then opened Awesome Entertainment and then shuttered Awesome Entertainment two years later and then opened Arcade for a week and a half. Anyway, again, getting derailed, sorry, apologize. Uh, you know, I kind of like both of these. I think I kind of like sharing them with you guys most of all. Uh, I wasn't, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I was not looking forward to reading either of these and I thought they were kind of ho-hum. But then once I got into character, and I, I really felt Chapel, and I really, uh, I really appreciated uh, these two espionage war comics that uh, are similar, but different. And this is a different take for me. I'm not used to this on Chapel. I'm used to Chapel being the jaded member of Youngblood who goes totally freaking psycho. Um, so this is kind of neat to see the past. And there's more to cover with Chapel's past as we continue our journey here at Crypto Comics, including the Operation Night Strike miniseries. This is uh, something still to come here on Crypto Comics. Rob Liefeld, Appreciation Season, coming up in October, is probably the perfect time to talk about Operation Night Strike, the next part of Chapel's journey, featuring Al Simmons before he was spawned. If you can't wait until October, you can wet your whistle for Chapel and Al Simmons in the Image Comics playlist here at Crypto Comics because you are going to want to be caught up on all of the Image Comics Youngblood Chapel Spawn lore before we dive any deeper into the deep end of the Rob Liefeld swimming pool. As for me though, I thought this one was a little bit better. This one, there is no second issue, so you know, you're not going to actually get to, like, see him do that. On this one from Awesome Entertainment, there is no second issue. There was just this single one-shot chapel that was released there in 97. Two and a half years after this one over here. So no matter which one you liked, I ask that you hit that thumbs up because I know you liked your boy Crypto playing chapel here today. And also playing Billy Zane. That was an excellent Billy Zane, too. If Billy Zane was playing a Southerner. Nailed it. If you're new, you can subscribe and then hit this bell down here and one of you will randomly be selected to join a secret government operation into Venezuela to get me some fresh coffee beans. Because I need a little pick-me-up before we get to our next totally awesome comic book review right here at Crypto Comics.